This is Johnny Dosco, broadcaster with the Oakland Athletics. You're listening to Jim on Base. The Jim on Base show has teamed up with my new friends at Old Hillside Bourbon Company. I got two of my favorite bottles here, Straight Bourbon Whiskey and the Straight Rye Whiskey. So whenever you want to get on base with that authentic Kentucky bourbon taste, make sure you visit OldHillsideBourbonCompany.com, their social media, Old Hillside CO, or pick up a bottle at BevMo and Total Wine, Old Hillside Bourbon Company. They'll always get you on base. Welcome back to another episode of the Gym on Base Show. For today's very special guest, we have on another special member of the Oakland Days broadcast team. He spent 30 years in the minor leagues to get to the big leagues and just finished his first official season this past season uh, broadcasting for the A's. He's always a very friendly face to see around the ballpark as well. Please welcome the great Johnny Dosco. Johnny, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Ryan. Appreciate it. Really, I was looking forward to this for a long time, so glad we got to hook up and get this uh, get this going. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. And I was wondering, uh, it's February, so are you kind of savoring the final days of being with the family before uh, spring training kind of gets underway? That's that's an uh, excellent way of putting it. I am. You know, I know that with my my wife and daughter, we're, we're getting to the final few days. I think once we get to the Super Bowl, a couple days later, I'm going to take off for L.A. for about four or five days and then head to Arizona. I mean, it's an exciting time of year because – Hope Springs Eternal. It just did the what do you the, the great thing about baseball is we always talk about is, you know, the daily soap opera. What's what's going to happen there? Everything's so unpredictable, and uh, so you never know. I mean, I, I'm really excited to see some of the younger players. I'm excited to see what this team can do in 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 2024. And yeah, so yes, the, the long answer, short answer is I'm excited. I'm going to miss my family. I'm excited. Um, for the season, but I also am savoring these final few days before before I take off, for sure. Savoring those final days, and it makes you wonder too, though, how'd the off season go? Did you go on any trips or anything kind of memorable during this past off season? You know what we, you know, I I, I went to L.A. a bunch to see my my parents, uh, and because uh, they're they're doing okay, but but I just you know they're eighty eight and eighty nine, so I'm I'm just savoring uh, all the time I can get with them, you know uh you know while while they're on this earth so I, they're they're all they're both healthy and doing great but i wanted to get that time with them so I, so I i spent a lot of time down there my wife started a new job so it didn't allow us to really take any any big trips this off season but i'm hoping next off season hawaii maybe something like that i we already talked about it so i think next off season we're planning something something a little bigger uh than than just going to la because it's been one of those off seasons where it just it flew it, it went so fast so i didn't i I was in LA, you know, I think once every three weeks, once a month, went to LA. So wow. no big trips, no big trips this off season. No, well, we sounds will. like, yeah, you're doing the important stuff though. You know, you're getting it in, but what do you like to do uh, for fun hobbies wise? Are you into sports like basketball, football, are you into music, like concerts or anything like that? I love music. And we, you know, that's another thing. We didn't go to any concerts this off season mm -hmm. too, but I, I would love to, to go to concert like comedy shows, uh concert, like, like to golf. So yeah, I, I keep pretty busy. There, there's there's enough stuff going. I actually took uh, I'm taking golf lessons this off season, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, that's been going pretty well. I you know you can't if you're if you're golfing with a guy like Ken Korak, which I haven't, you have to you have to be on your game. This guy shot his age. He shot a 71 last wow. year, which is insane. Right. So you know if you're going to golf with a guy like that, you can't hack and shoot like a 118, 120. You know I do count every stroke. No mulligans, no breakfast balls. So I'm waiting until I get. Decent enough where I'm, you know, shooting the 90s or something where I can golf with Ken and not be embarrassed. You know, it's my goal. <laughs> that sounds great. And yeah, I got to join you on the golf lessons. And as you know, when, you, when you're involved with sports, there's always some kind of charity thing or fun golf event to do. So uh, yeah, it's, it's good that you're fine tuning the stroke out there. Absolutely. I, I need it, man. My golf swing is, is uh, you know, think, think Charles Barkley when you think of my golf swing, it's brutal. So, so I, I, I got to get, I got to get better. I've got to find a way to get better. And these golf lessons are helping for sure. No question. Well, I'm curious, uh, your last name, Dosko, what is that? Is that Russian or what ethnicity is Russian. that? Yeah, it's Russian. Yeah, I got T's growing up, Dosko from Moscow, all that stuff. But yeah, no, <laughs> it, it's it's funny because it's pronounced Dosko, this part of the country, but back east, all my cousins and relatives out there, it's Dosko. But ah. people do Dosko. People say Dosko. I don't correct them. I mean, even though it's Dosko out here, but people, a lot of people on the team, it's just, it looks the way it's phonetically, we see it, Dosko. So it mm -hmm. does, it does. Doscow. So I don't, I'm, I'm done correcting people. I'm too old to correct people. <laughs> well, I know uh, it sounds like you were born in Terrytown, New York, right? But you yes. grew up in LA. So how did that kind of happen? 
Yeah, well, um, my I, my dad landed a job in L.A. Uh, after uh, when I was six months old. So I, I was born in North Harrytown, about 45 minutes up st- from the city and then moved out to uh, L.A. Uh, when I was six months old. My sister was four. My brother was five. So, yeah. So but I, I love the I have New York roots and a lot of my relatives are out there. And, I, you know, they're they're uh, it's beautiful out there, the, the beautiful country up there in upstate New York. And I, I love I haven't been out there in a while, but uh, I, I would in New York playing the Yankees last year, but I have I haven't been upstate in in a really long time, and I miss it up there. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. And also, when you did come to L.A., I guess you couldn't really get away with much because uh, your dad was he a professor at the college you went to, or? Yeah, yeah, really, exactly. Yeah, I had to kind of keep. <laughs> I had to keep. I got a little trouble anyway, but tried to keep that kind of. You're right. That's a good point. I had to keep that really. Had to keep that low. Yeah. <laughs> And your dad grew up in New York, right? So I know he was a Yankees fan. And you mentioned going back to New York this past season. I was actually at one of those games in New York, A's Yankees. So oh. was that pretty, yeah, was that special for you to go back to Yankee Stadium? I imagine. Yeah, you know, my dad, uh, my dad was such a baseball fan. There, the there are legendary stories from from his mom, my late grandmother, who would tell me stories about my dad, eight years old, and he'd take the subway by himself to the game, <laughs> keep score, and come back. I mean, wow. that's unheard of today, right? He he would do that, go to several games by himself at eight years old on the on the on the train and and love baseball. And that's where we got kind of all got our love for baseball from my dad. He 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 uh he raised us with the game, you know. So my brother, sister, and I, we we fell in love with the game and and he was a big, big part of that. You know, he he raised us with this with this sport. So uh yeah he's still into it uh you know he, he grew up he was a he's such a dodger fan growing up but i feel like he's losing his uh he was losing kind of his dodger fandom and he just fell in love with otani so he's kind of I, I, every time we talk baseball of late he was talking about the angels so i don't know if that's going to change now that otani went to the dodgers maybe he's a dodger fan again but i'm like what's going on with you you're a dodger fan your whole life why why are you changing it's i think it's otani i really do it's the otani factor <laughs> uh it's funny well, uh, it sounds like your dad was maybe more on the more serious side. So, do you get maybe your looseness, your your uh, sense of humor? Is that from your mom or? No question. No question. My dad's funny, but in a in a different way. He's more, you know, he's he's super intelligent. I mean, this guy this guy is a brilliant dude. I mean, he he graduated from high school at at fifteen, from college at nineteen, law school at twenty two, right? And I was just trying. I, I was, you know, I I obviously it must skip a generation because I'm not the brightest dude. Everybody knows that. But so, but, but yeah, he's up, but he is funny, but my mom, you're right. A little looser. My mom's uh, uh, got a little more of a personality I feel. So yeah, I I definitely got that from my mom for sure. There's no question. Okay. And uh, since you did come up in LA, uh, I imagine are the Dodgers your team? Like who, who are your sports teams and favorite players growing up? You know, the Dodgers were my team growing up with the, with, you know, with, with that, that whole infield of, you know, Garvey Lopes, Russell and Say, and Dusty Baker, Reggie Smith, uh, Ken Landry, all those guys. I grew up, I grew up a big, big Dodger fan. You kind of lose a little bit of your fandom as you as you get into the game. I've been in the game since '93, so I kind of kind of lost my I'm kind of envious of my friends that are just huge fans of teams. And I obviously I'm I want the A's to win every game, so I'm an A's guy. But uh, but as far as like uh, a team besides the A's, I don't really uh my heart's not really into like the Dodgers winning anymore. It's, it's sad. You know, you, you lose that as, as, as you get in the game, I, I have, you know, so I don't really, I don't know. And plus we were, you know, it just, I was so conflicted. We were, we were a Giants affiliate for so long. Right. So I, I got to know those players as they were going up and they hate the Dodgers, but I, I just, I'm not, I just, I don't hate the Dodgers. I don't hate the Giants. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that in me. So, but I get the rivalry thing. I totally get it like i understand if you grow up a you grow up a giants fan you dislike the dodgers you grow up a dodger fan you hate the giants but i don't know even as a dodger fan you may be saying oh you're not you weren't a true dodger fan i i never really despised the giants except when i was growing up and joe morgan hit that home run off terry forrester in 1992 <laughs> that, that that crushed my soul for sure i was a big dodger man. i was 15 years old huge dodger guy and uh no, I was 16. It was 82, right? It was I was 16, and Joe Morgan hit that home run off Terry Forster. That broke my heart. That that crushed me. So at that point, when you're growing up, you are a big, you know, you are into it. But uh, yeah, just I've kind of lost that ability, that fandom uh, outside the team that, I, that I'm calling for, the A's, which obviously I want them to win every game. Yeah, 
I imagine it's kind of like going to Disneyland, seeing Mickey Mouse take the head off, you know, like you, when you get backstage, it kind of takes some of that mystery away. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good analogy. That's true. <laughs> Well, uh, John Miller, I've had him on the show, Dave Fleming, and uh, I know John Miller grew up playing yeah. that spasmatics game, and uh, Dave Fleming told me a fun story how he remembers driving home in his car as a kid and hearing John Miller on the radio broadcasting games. So were you someone that kind of broadcasted along the games or did something like that growing up? Oh, yeah. You know, I, brought, I, I grew up listening to Vin Scully call so many games. I grew up uh, falling asleep to Chick Hearn. Uh, Chick Hearn, the famous uh, LA Laker announcer, is so good. You know, games in the refrigerator, uh, <laughs> butter's getting hard. Uh, you know, uh, uh, put them in the popcorn machine, uh, yo yoing up and down. It's 94 by 50 hunk of wood. I mean, all the expressions Chick Hearn had. And I grew up listening to Lakers basketball, grew up listening to Dodgers baseball, grew up listening to LA Kings hockey. So I grew up with three of the best and Chick Hearn, Bob Miller, and Ben Scully. And, and so, yeah, I think I kind of knew when I was pretty young. Uh, that I wanted to do that. And what a thrill for Dave Fleming, by the way, how about that? Grew up yeah. in the DC area, getting the chance to hear John Miller growing up. And then he gets to work with him uh, in San Francisco <laughs> and Dave Fleming's one of the best. So it's like, that's pretty, pretty cool that uh, he gets to experience that with, with his guy. And I did, I do, I guess I did a little bit as well. Just listening to Ken Korak. I, I heard mm -hmm. Ken a lot, um, not so much growing up, but when I got a little older and in the business, I've been listening to Ken Duet's games for two decades. So that, that's been pretty cool to get to know him, but that's not at the level of uh, Miller and Fleming. That's pretty cool. He grew up listening to the guy and now he's working with him. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I was like, that's I don't know. If, cool. I don't know if you should tell John Miller that might make him feel too old. <laughs> right. John's great, man. It was, it was, a, he's good. Good guy. Those guys are great. Those giant guys are great. Yeah, it was, it was, I got a chance to call a couple giants games in 2022, uh, September 9th and 14th, I worked with Dave and I worked with John. So that was, I'm glad I had got to experience that uh, before I landed the A's job. That's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, I thought, what are the odds? You know, you did some broadcasting, obviously, for uh, the Fresno Grizzlies, then the River Cats, and then you do some games for the Giants and the A's. Like, it's kind of cool that you have that, uh, you're able to do that for both teams. Yeah, all four. Yeah, the yeah. Grizzlies. Yeah, the Grizzlies, uh, two thousand to um, or ninety eight through, through two thousand, and then the crazy part is, and I was talking with Doug Greenwell about this, just how wild it was that we went to the A's two thousand one to two thousand um, fourteen, and then back to the Giants, and it crushed Doug Dougie's heart because Dougie's a Giants guy, and Dougie was you know the Fresno Grizzlies were Giants, and so I was A's. So it kind of crushed both our hearts at the time because I was like, oh my gosh, we'll lose the A's. I'm not, I know all these A's guys coming up, you know, was going through the system and big A's guy and, and, and Dougie just giants are in his heart. I mean, that's his family. Right. And so it just, it was kind of, John Shea did that article on us in the Chronicle in uh, going into the, going into the 15 season. And we both like, we both were heartbroken at the time because we were just like, wow, I'm losing the A's. You're losing the giants. What are we doing here? We, uh, so it was that I remember at the time that was a, that was a big thing. That was a big deal, you know, and, and obviously the broadcasters are when they're, they're talking about changing affiliates, they're not thinking about the broadcaster. I mean, they, they don't care, you know, it's just part of it. Right. But for us, that was, that was, big, that was big. That was heartbreaking that we lost, we lost those affiliates at that time, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, before we get full on to your broadcasting career, I was also curious about uh, your family. Uh, I know you live in El Dorado Hills, but yeah. I was also curious when the season starts, uh, where do you live? Well, last year I had an Airbnb in uh, in Alameda. So if it was a night game followed by a night game, night game, day game, day game, day game, I would stay out there. If it was a day game, then a night game, I would come home because uh, because oh, okay. it's it's just too too long of a commute for me to go uh, if it's a night game, night game, you know, all that, because it's just too too quick a turnaround. So I would, uh, about 95% of the time, I would uh, I would stay out at the Airbnb, which I like. And, and unfortunately, they filled that up. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking for another Airbnb right now, which I, I'm close to getting one. So, it, but it's, it helps being five minutes from the ballpark. I need that, just the dailiness of baseball being around it. And, and I don't want to just commute back and forth all the time and, uh, I think it's, uh, I, I was smart to do that. I, I'm looking forward to doing it again because uh, I, I like being that close to the ballpark as, yeah. for the home games. have to be. You got to get one of those um, chargeable cars. You got to get a Tesla or something. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> get me one. That sounds yeah. great. <laughs> well, you were married in 2016, right? So I was curious, how did you meet your wife and how important has her support been in a three-year journey? Oh, she's been amazing. She has absolutely been uh, my rock, really. You know, she was always, you know, it's funny, my wife, when, uh, you know, I met her, you know, when I was about 40, uh 48 or 49 and so right when i was getting to my 50s and i as i said i've said this a lot just the fact that when they go through my story i was told her listen i'm a triple a guy and i'm i'm in my 50s i'm probably gonna always be a triple a guy i'm gonna try to get to the big leagues and do the best i can but i probably in triple a and we kind of she would always say nope you're going you're gonna go to the show you're going to the show I go, babe, it's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not. And that's okay. I, I was fine with it. I had peace with it. You know, I kept trying, but you know, you, you send out your stuff and you get the same, the same uh, kind of emails back. Like, you know, we, we got a lot of, we got a lot of interest in this and, and uh, you know, uh, you're not, you're not one of the, one of the finalists. So uh, she, but she, I, I, I he was my rock. Like she would always say, you're, you're going to get there. So that's why it was really emotional when I did, to get to share that news with her when she believed in me more than I believed in myself on that stuff. You know, I always thought I had a chance to get there, but you know, there are a lot of guys in triple a right now that, sh that could be in the big leagues and dominate in the big leagues. And they're in, in triple a, it's just getting a break. Right. So, yeah. uh, so, anyway, so she's been, she's been a rock. I am, uh, and she helped raise my, my daughter. You know, I, I had a daughter from my previous marriage and my daughter was nine when I uh, met Deb or eight, eight or nine when I met Deb. So, so, um, and she's looking at colleges now. So, so that's crazy. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, so that really helped raise her. And, and, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's going to be uh, going to college, which is crazy to me that she's about to go to school. She's about to go to college and she's, uh, looking at, uh, some different schools. So we'll see, we'll see what she, uh, see what she decides. Pretty exciting. Yeah. And her name's Emily. Emily. And, yep. Uh, what is she into? Is she into sports or is she kind of into other stuff or? Not really. More into music. She plays. She plays guitar. She uh, she sings and she's into music. And uh, yeah, she's she's not into baseball at all. She's she's those. Why didn't you get me into baseball? I'm like, I tried. I tried <laughs> to get you into baseball but to no avail. I'm not going to force you into baseball. You you don't like it. You don't like it. You, she wasn't into it. So, uh, you know, she knew what what she knows what dad does. And she I mean, she now she's she's into it a little bit more than she was when she was like nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just wasn't into that stuff at all. So. Uh, yeah, so she's she's gonna study. She may study journalism. Uh, that's what she's she's not exactly sure, but she thinks journalism when she goes to school. But but uh, just give her a guitar. She she can pick it. She can play. So it's pretty exciting to hear. Yeah, we hear her in her her room all the time playing, and she she just crushes it. So awesome. she's got a talent. So she, but I don't know if she has a passion enough passion for it to pursue that. Mm -hmm. But she, she likes to play. For nice. sure, and she's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I know you also have that uh, book title after her the haiku book uh good night m yeah. baseball and life yeah. through haiku so uh, i guess did being on the road a lot did, did that kind of help keep you centered or, or keep you sane being able to write like that or you know what that actually i wrote that actually uh kind of like you with your show uh, i i did during the pandemic i did that okay. I, I was i was i was outside and i was i i you know i was for a lot of the time. And so I was just like, I am going to, I'm going to, I started writing a haiku uh, just for, for fun. And I got to like, I got, she was, my wife's like, how many have you written? I'm like about 150. She's like, you should put together a book. I'm like, oh yeah, I should, <laughs> idiot, right? I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So, so I put together this book and uh, I, I, I wrote about 450, 455 haiku and uh, narrowed it down to uh, 198. And that's how that all happened. That was all during the pandemic. Wow. Like so Jim on base, just all during the <laughs> pandemic. And then it just, then, then it just started, uh, it started happening. And then I, I self published it and sent it out. I mean, it's like, I mean, people say you're an author. It's not real. I mean, it's they're haikus. I mean, I'm sure about fifth grade, right. But it's still, it was fun. It was a fun project and it, it was a fun, it was a fun book. It was really was, it was good. Are you still writing now or? You know, no, I, I do want to, I do want to do a second haiku book though. I, I need to start writing. I started, I have about 25 written down, but I just, I haven't been able to get in that free flowing like I did during, uh, during that summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to to do it yet. I, I'm still want to, I still want to want to write another one for sure. Cause there, there, these ideas are in this brain going. So <laughs> I, I think I, I would like to write another. 
or just on the last several years, right? Yeah, yeah I'd, so I'd love to do that. Well, yeah, to get into sure. your uh, broadcasting career, you said how you've been in it since 1993. And I know you uh, got your start right with the Cedar Rapid Colonels, and that was yes. the Angels single A team. Yeah. Uh, and I heard, I thought it was interesting. You had to sell $30,000 of advertising to get the job. Is that true? Or I did. I did, man. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, wow. So, it must yeah, have been I, tough. <laughs> it was. I mean, I wasn't really a natural born salesperson either. So, it, it was tough. And I, I thought, uh, he, the agreement was you have to sell $30,000 worth of radio advertising. And if you don't, you go home. Like you, you're, you don't have a job anymore. You, you can't broadcast. You know, there's no other job. So it was Jack Rader. Who's such a great, great guy. And, uh, I thought we were done. I thought we were, we were at like, I think 18,000 or 19,000 with like two weeks to go. And I called, uh, back home. I called, you know, I said, called the folks. I called friends. I said, yeah, it's not going to happen. I tried. I came up short. And then we had some big account, some Nabisco or some big account came through that was for like 14,000 or whatever. And <laughs> and so we just barely got in. It was like 30, 31, five or something. And I, so it, so it worked. So I was able to get that, keep that gig. And that's how it all started. So wow. it was really fortunate that it came into the light. It was a miracle. It really was. Cause I can't tell. <laughs> So it was a complete miracle. So got it. And uh, it was huge. It, it, that was, that was, that was fantastic. Yeah. It's a really cool story. And another uh, tidbit that I've heard you mention before is you guys had to vote between having a mascot or a fax machine. Right. So I was wondering what was your vote though? What did you vote for? <laughs> My vote was for the, for the mascot, for sure. Okay. Mr. Shucks. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> <See Rabbit Girl. laughs> exactly. That was great. That's great, man. You did your homework, Ryan, man. Jeez. Uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was great. Man. We had a, yeah, we didn't have, we didn't have running water in the off season. We had a porta potty. We did not have running water in the off season. It was so, it was so you're freezing in, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, man. It was so cold. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, oh man, fax machine or a mascot. That's right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We saved it. We waited for the fax machine the next year. That's right. Wow. Yeah. But what did you do for fun out in Iowa? It doesn't sound like the most happening place. My, my grandparents are from there, so I was I was wondering what you did for fun out there. <laughs> yeah, I loved it, man. I don't. It was it was weird. Uh, I you know golfed a little bit out there when you mm -hmm. could, when it wasn't freaking cold. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, always. I don't know, man. With my brain being like it is, I'm never bored. <laughs> so I don't know. I always found something to do, you know. So yeah, I mean, we. I was, I, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money, but it, it was it was a good time out there with with Jack Raider and, and, uh, and all the, you know, we had a few employees there, but I made some great friends out there. Uh, Tommy Lynch and, and his family and a uh, bunch of people. It was great. It was great. I did, I did enjoy my time in Iowa for sure. There's no okay. question about it. One thing I did before Cedar Rapids though, was I, I broadcast um, high school girls basketball, high school mm -hmm. boys basketball. And the girls basketball was six on six at the time. It was the last wow. of the kind. It was three on three, three forwards, three guards. Huh. And it was three on three, basically. And, and they loved it. They drew, they, the girls outdrew the boys. The girls had like 14,000 people for the finals. They packed Veterans Memorial wow. Coliseum and, uh, and the boys drew eight and the girls drew 14. It was just the girls high school athletics out there, especially basketball was huge. Wow. And the yeah. Osage Lady Green Devils, the Osage Lady Green Devils went 28 no. And I, and I, and they won the whole thing. Uh, the <laughs> Lady Green Devils won the whole thing back in 1992. And I got to call those games. It was exciting. Well, you're a good luck charm then. Yeah. I got lucky there, man. It, it, it was, <laughs> it was uh, Vicky. It was Vicky Hackenmiller. It was Melissa Peter, Terry Fleming, uh, Ann Knutson. Oh, I remember those names. <laughs> those, were the, those were the legends, the legends of that, that team out there in, in Osage, Iowa, the Osage Lady Green Devils. Never forget it. Wow. Well, I'm every time I see you and, and you have it on right now, you have the old school kind of media cap on. So is that something you've worn through all the years? Or yeah, I have. Yeah, I've been wearing it. The, that's the thing. Like I got a hard time working with Dallas last year because people are like, "Why are you stealing his shtick?" He, he had the hat. <laughs> well, honestly, I've been wearing the hat as long as Dallas has. And I, well, you yeah. can go back to uh, my TV games in Sacramento with Steve Sachs and Bill Lasky. I mean, I was wearing a hat. You know, I was wearing a hat. But, <laughs> But I think he probably wears it better, more of a handsome, more of a handsome devil than me, I would say. But uh, but I, I love the cap. I've been wearing it. My brother uh, kind of got me into it a long time ago. 
I, I have pictures of myself from like 17, 18 years ago wearing wearing these caps. So I've been wearing it a long time. I love it. Uh, not a, not afraid of my. I, I got a decent <laughs> decent shaped head, so it's not bad. I just I like the style of it. I've got about fifteen of these now, okay. so yeah, I do I do like it. I do like it. Uh, no question. I'm a big fan. Big fan. <laughs> well, it's a good look, and uh, you've been a part of over four thousand minor league games. So yeah. I yeah I was wondering, is there kind of an art then that you get through the years on how to eat or how to go to the bathroom during games? You know, uh, now that we're in a situation where uh, the bathrooms are close, we're we're set, right? So in the in the big leagues and in AAA, all, all the, even in AAA, you weren't that far from the bathroom. There were a couple. Now that I think, I'm trying to think of what ballpark where the bathrooms were down the hall well in minnesota i went way further than i had to there was one way down there there was one closer and i found out when we were coming out the last day i'm like there was a bathroom right here and i was sprinting i was sprinting to get back for the for the 90 seconds sprint to get back so again comes out to me being an idiot uh but, but i'm telling you like uh when i was in cedar rapids uh when i was in fresno actually the bathrooms at biden field it was a uh, college stadium, right? So the bathrooms were all the way down the steps, and like it was, it was a task to get to the bathroom between innings. So you did best you could in going before the game, but if if something happened, sixth or seventh inning, I had to sprint. I mean, sprint down the steps, go to the bathroom, and I'm come back on the air, and I'm doing the game by myself. I'm inevitably out of breath. So the end of the sixth. Yeah. So that, that was challenging. That, that part was challenging for sure, you yeah. know, but for the most part, they're pretty close. Um, by Celia, I remember in the Cal league, I think I had to sprint down, down the steps. Uh, they didn't have one San Jose. I don't think, I think you had to sprint down the steps and yeah, the a ball was a little more challenging, I think, than, than triple a, but triple a had its, uh, triple a, uh, Biden field home of Fresno Grizzly 2000. Uh, or 98, 99, 2000. I remember that, that was, that was challenging. That was challenging. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it. And uh, I was wondering, like for me, when it came to my journey of getting where I wanted to be career wise, I remember early on, you would hear stories of, Oh, it took this guy 10 years to get hired or it took that guy eight years or whatever it was. And I would always think to myself, well, I hope that's not me. That'd be like a nightmare. Ended up taking me like 14 years. So I'm just wondering, do you have any memories yeah. of that? Like maybe seeing players or other broadcasters and thinking, man, well, that won't be me. Like, did you ever think that going on? No question. I thought, I mean, look, I <clears throat> I thought when I got to A-ball, I, when I got to AAA in 98, I was 31. And I'm like, the nice thing is about this, get me getting this job is I'm getting the big leagues by 35. That's the beauty of it. I, you know, it's great being AAA and it's cute. And I think it's going to be fun, but I'm definitely getting the big leagues at 35. Well, 35 came and went. One of the big leagues. So it just, it, it just uh, I, I always thought that, um, uh, if I got to AAA at a reasonable age, I was set. But then I looked at, as I started getting a AAA, I'm like, wow, I'm seeing the same guys every year uh, <laughs> that that haven't gone up from AAA. I'm like, okay. So, you know, look, we went, I think Pacific Coast League went from 2006 to 2023 before someone got to the big leagues. It took wow. 17 years. When I got to the big leagues, it was 17 years before somebody from – our league got up there. Brett Dolan was the last one in 06 with the Astros. And after that, no one from our league. And there's a lot of talent in the Pacific Coast League, a lot of broadcasting talent in that league. So I was like, what, what is going on here? A lot of internationally, Pawtucket was a factory. They have guys going, they had mm -hmm. guys going up all the time. But in, in, uh, in Pacific Coast League, we just hadn't been that fortunate. I hope that uh, me getting in, I hope, it starts to happen more for the, for the PCL guys and girls, because it's been, uh, it, it hasn't happened uh, consistently. So yeah, to answer your question, for sure. I was, there were, I was like, wow, that guy, you always, you're looking at your competition, right? You're seeing who gets there fast. Like Dave Fleming getting in at 27 years old. I mean, that's phenom, right? That's crazy. Incredible. Yeah. 27. I was just starting out in Cedar Rapids. I was like, wow. So, uh, I was joking with him when I called that game with him. I'm going, yeah, we, we, you and I took the same path, man. It took us the same amount of time to get there. It's great. <laughs> got there at 27. I got there at uh, 56. So, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering what was going through your mind when you broadcasted with him. <laughs> Amazing. Well, um, 
I was at Pebble Beach the other day, and it kind of made me wonder with you too. Like, I was kind of having a tough couple days where I wasn't getting interviews, and I was starting to think, man, this is a waste of time. I should just go home. And then, sure enough, I, I waited it out. I didn't quit and give in. And then I got five great interviews, and then it made me feel motivated. Like, okay, I can do this every year now. I'm figuring things out. Um, was there anything like that that comes to mind for you? Or maybe you felt like giving up, and then something cool happened, and it kept you motivated or it kept you pumped up to keep going? That's a, that's a great question. You you know full well, just knowing your story, that uh, 14 years to get where you wanted to go for, for firefighting, which is really cool. That's a great testament to that because that's probably about the same amount of time firefighting years compared to regular years, right? It's probably 30 <laughs> in regular life years, what you guys yeah. go through. So I, you, have a, you have a really, really cool story. I would say just doing it every day and thinking about doing something else, right? Like if, when I was getting into my fifties, I'm like, God, what am, what am I doing? I'm not going to the big leagues. What am I, why am I, because, because you love it kind of talking to yourself. Like <clears throat> I loved it. You know what I mean? So I was like, I, 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 I knew I didn't want and really couldn't do anything else professionally. I didn't really know if I had, didn't really have another skill set. So I was like, I, I don't, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. At least I'm having fun doing a job that's different every day. And I love doing it. So I don't think I want to really try anything else. But I think the motivation was just uh, knowing as long as I'm in AAA, I have a shot. It may be a long shot, but I have a shot to get to the big leagues. And plus, having present moment happiness in what you're doing, right? Like I was in, in Fresno and I was in Sacramento and Cedar Rapids, high desert. I still loved what I did. I still loved calling ball. It was still different. It was pr pretty cool in AAA seeing players get called up being a part of that 2007 Jerry Blevins call up with Tony D Francesco up in the Solon club when the whole front office saw him get called up and tears on his 24th birthday, things like that. You know, you see things like that and you're like, wow, this is a really cool job, you know? And also like, look, all my friends that had really good jobs and some had high paying jobs and they would always tell me, look, the worst day of your job is better than the best day of my job. So, so just remember that. And they, my friends were really, you know, always say it takes a village and it does, you know, I have, I have some really close friends and they're like, stick with it, you know, because you're at least you're doing something you love, mm -hmm. you know, you know, growing, going through the business, making a ton of money, but you, 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 you definitely uh, have happiness calling baseball for a living. Right. And that's why I tell guys are, and girls are going to a ball. You're, you're doing something you love that that's beats that money stuff's overrated compared to your present moment happiness, right. How you are inside. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, is one thing that kept me going is that happy. I, I'm happy doing baseball every day, you know, just like you're happy as a firefighter, right? Like you're doing your passion. I think, yeah, I yeah. think there, there are definitely parallels to doing something you love. Right? And yeah. you wouldn't be doing it if you didn't love it. You're helping people. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, that's something that I always kept in mind that people telling me like, you are uh, uh, fortunate to be doing something you love. And I, 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 I took that to heart. Yeah, and it makes sense, you know, when they say, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So I always have to remind myself, you know, uh, yeah. all the fight was worth it in the end. I was curious, um, you, you had a bobblehead giveaway um, in AAA, and it, it was a bobble nose, right? Yes. So I was wondering, where is that in the house? Like, do you keep it on the mantle or? No, no you know what? My wife my wife actually has one by her, her, uh, her desk. She has one. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't actually own one. I don't, I don't have one. I don't know, how, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's been pretty cool. Cause it's the only one of its kind. And they were, yeah. you know, like, my daughter was six at the time and she didn't really understand. She didn't really understand about how, like she, those they're are they making fun of you? I go, absolutely. They're making fun of me they're for sure. I said, yes, they are. And it's a good thing. I said, it's okay to be made fun. Of. It's okay. You know, it really is. And she, you know, I said, look, and, and plus I told her like, you have part of my nose now fortunately she got her mom's more of her mom's nose than her dad's nose but but i said don't it's celebrate our faces celebrate them right don't it's it's okay to have a big nose it's okay right it's okay yeah. you 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 know uh, so i i think yeah that was pretty cool it was the, the bottle nose thing was really cool they were a little uh apprehensive to approach me out there like we want to do a bobble <laughs> with you but we want to do a bobble nose are you good with it and i said absolutely i'm good with it but make the nose really big please do <laughs> that's awesome i'll be looking on ebay for that you know it's funny i, I someone one, one, a player i think it was tyler Beatty, got one on ebay for like 30 bucks but it's humbling <laughs> because 
because uh, so another friend of mine saw one in the thrift store for 99 cents. <laughs> so I was like, great, 99 cents. My, my bottom one. Yeah, quite the range there. A, what an eagle. Yeah, yeah, 99 cents. But you can't even give it away, you know? Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was pretty. It was pretty, it was pretty fun. It was a fun. It was a fun deal, man. It was it was pretty cool having that bobble nose. The nose actually bobbles like it's wow. like it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, we spoke about how hard it was to get to the big leagues, and also it made me think of a fellow uh, grinder, uh, Mike Ustremski. You got to call games for him in Sacramento. He's he's a nice guy. Yes. He's been on been yeah. on the show a few times. And I first uh, met you uh, last year during the A's Giants uh, preseason games. You were in the clubhouse and you were looking, uh, Mike Shremsey was showing you pictures on his phone of his baby. And yes. I, I just thought how special it is because you're not just a broadcaster and then a player. You're really seeing these guys grow up and growing with them through life, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, is a great guy. And and just to, you know, uh, get the opportunity to to see him grow through the years. He grinded, as you said, he grinded for a while and and took him a long time to get there. So I was really any success he has. I mean, I definitely root for him. You know, he he's a great guy and and uh, pretty cool to see see his family grow. And, and uh, just I, I'm I, I couldn't be happier for him, you know. So, uh, yeah, that was that's pretty cool because I, I, you know, a lot of those guys like you know, when you change affiliates and you change jobs, you know, you don't see those guys on a, on a daily basis. That's the funny, the crazy thing about baseball, right? You're with these guys every day, you know, triple a in big leagues, it's a little more separated. Uh, the media and the players triple a, you're like a rock and roll band. You're all together, right? So you're traveling on those early morning flights sometimes. And, you know, you, you're you see him more you just it's just a different it's a it's a different vibe not it's it's not better or worse it's just different you know so uh you see these it's funny you see guys on a daily basis then just cuts off either they get traded or you change jobs or something you just stop stop seeing them so you know i i'm i'm in touch with most of my most of the people in my phone are people that uh, were in baseball and are not in baseball anymore. And we just kept in touch and they're doing other jobs. All these, you know, baseball, there's a, there's a, you know, shelf life. And then all of a sudden players 34, 35, hopefully even later, then they retire and do other things, but mm -hmm. friendships are friendships, man, you know, right. So you're just, so you, you're in touch with people, you, you gravitate to people or who you're, uh, you have stuff in common with and you're interested in and you stay in touch with those people. So I would say it's funny. Most of the people in my phone are retired uh, players, coaches and uh, all that. So it, it's pretty cool. It's the relationships in this game is what makes this game the best. And I, it's true with, with every sport or every industry. And even your, your industry is a lot yeah. like baseball and the camaraderie mm -hmm. you have going through uh, battles and you're doing more real life stuff than obviously baseball, but the, but I think firefighting and baseball, as far as the clubhouse is concerned, is yeah. very similar as far as the bond. When you know what goes on the clubhouse stays in the clubhouse, the, the conversations, the kiffle, keeping on the low, right? And I think yeah. a lot of that is uh, so very similar. You know, we're in very similar industries, I believe. Yeah, no, I, I've thought that a lot when you're in the clubhouse and just seeing guys kind of sitting at the table playing cards or whatever. Uh, I have gotten the same vibe, which I think kind of helps for the show too. Yeah, so makes me feel a little bit uh, more relaxed when I'm trying to get interviews because I'm like, okay, they're just they're just like me, you know. No question, no yeah. question. And look, you got like like you guys literally go through it together when you when that you know that bell hits and you guys got to do you know it is you're working as a team to get. Mm -hmm. to get where you need to go it's like you're all it doesn't matter what background you have it does just like baseball in that uh i mean obviously it's a little more real life than when you're fighting fires than, than baseball as far as the as far as the camaraderie is concerned right mm -hmm. that it's it's so it's so similar i've thought about that and and just the fact that you guys are going through it together and doesn't matter what your background is you all have a common goal of helping people yeah. and you know, so that that's that's pretty cool about uh, your uh, your business. Well, speaking of like the camaraderie and everything, I know you're you're a funny guy, and you you've been known to play some pranks on people. So I was wondering, uh, has anyone played pranks on you though, and gotten you pretty good? Yeah, matter of fact, yeah, <laughs> there have been people <laughs> who have, uh, and they they try to you know I AAA is a, a 
it lends itself to pranks because again, you have so much time together and new players are coming up and players that are wide eyed to be in triple a for the first time, <laughs> just mess with them saying you're a roving instructor or, you know, and you can't in big leagues. You can't really, you, you know, you can't do it. You can't do it as much, you know, big leagues. You, you can't do it really at all compared to triple a you know, the pranks, because just it's, it's a little, a little more serious and a little more separated as far as the, the media and the, mm. the, everything and everybody you know the players know what's going on so you can't but triple a it lends itself to be able to to do that but i i messed with a player and uh in uh gosh man it was like 2000 what was it 2005 or six maybe it been a little a little later but um yeah i think it was john halama i think and i messed with him and he turned it around and he got me nervous about messing with him because he acted like he was connected to some, <laughs> some, <laughs> uh, so yeah. So he, he got me, believe me, he got me back. I can go into the details of it, but he got me back pretty good. And I also had like uh, a couple players. Uh, I had a player call me up when I was back when I was single. I had a player call me up and act like he was the boyfriend of a girl I got together with or something. And he, he just said, I, "I know where you. I know where I'm going to come into the booth. I'm going to get you." And he, he had, had to go for like 20, twenty minutes until he finally pushed into laughter. He was on the phone. I'm like, Look, I didn't know what it was back in the day. This was, well, man, it was crazy. He got me so good though. So yeah, players they'll, they'll turn around on you. They'll they'll get you. That's a good they'll, one. They'll get it back for you. I deserve. I deserve. I deserve all of it from all the pranks I played. So I definitely deserve it. Well, I think my favorite one, I don't know if it's really a prank, but um, where maybe things went a little differently than you thought. You had a spelling bee champion in the booth, right? And things went a little uh, little yes, different. I thought that was a good story. Yeah, yes. yeah that was uh, 2001. I think I just started with the Rivercats. And he, this kid was eight years old. And he, I, I was so I thought I'd get cute with him. I say, spell decision. And he said, D- I and I go eh, like, like a buzzer and he just burst into tears and his dad's looking at me like fix this you know fix this really <laughs> and uh, so I just uh, I just told him to spell river cats and he got it right and uh, you know look I tried to give the kids some tough love but then he was a homeschool kid it didn't pan out too well for me so it was, yeah. it was a tough start in my river cats career right there <laughs> they pretty good. cry your first month not, not ideal not ideal <laughs> Well, since it took you so long to get to where you're at uh, with the A's now broadcasting at the highest level, do you do you trust it still? Are you still kind of like feeling like it's not real? Or uh, yeah, I, I I trust it. I do. Okay. I I I, I like it. No, I'm still. It's it. You know, it's weird. The first year, because uh, you're just in, going into these these stadiums and you're just kind of like wow, looking around like this is real. Like this is going to call the game here at at Rogers center, I'm going to call a game, you know, I'm calling a game at, at Yankee stadium. And so, yeah, you, you do have to pinch yourself at first, but then it's like anything else. You just, you have a job to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So you just, uh, the bottom line is it's the same game you were calling in, in triple a, as far as the, you know, X and O, so to speak, just got to call ball, you know, but yeah, it was, it's pretty, I don't think I'll ever get over the awe of just being in a big league ballpark and looking around and seeing that top deck and seeing how beautiful the stadium is. I guess what, what kind of, uh, uh, alarm me it was just like how smaller the ballpark seem when you're in person than you see them on TV and and they're 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 still massive structures and they're palaces don't get me wrong but it's just they're a little more cozy and quaint than you think when you see them on TV than when you go in there except for Texas Arlington the ballpark in Arlington's huge okay yeah but uh but they're the ballparks are all amazing they really are I, I enjoyed every ballpark everyone is is different everyone has little nooks and crannies and I walk around every every ballpark I walked around I went to the upper deck I looked down so I, I got to experience that I really didn't uh, you know take anything for granted I was just enjoying all the moments walking around those ballparks and seeing that this is a big league stadium this is the yeah. major leagues. And I enjoyed that and I'm gonna do the same thing this year when I go to different ballparks again I'm gonna do the same thing walk around these ballparks. I really enjoyed Cleveland's ballpark. That stadium is beautiful. Kansas city. There were so, so many good ones. Pittsburgh was unreal. Uh, so that, that part of it was really, really fun to get to experience that, you know, and, and really, as I don't think in 2012, when I filled in for Korak, I don't think I really did that. I, I think I was just trying to, uh, I was, I don't know. I, I didn't really like, um, uh, 
experience of the way I experienced it last year, where I totally embraced just my uh, my time there and, and just seeing the ballparks from all the different perspectives, go out to Kansas City by the waterfall and see it from that perspective. Yeah. I really walked around and enjoyed it. I, I will say I'm do the same thing in 2024 for sure. Yeah, Kevin Franson, uh, I saw him. I got to cover a game in Pittsburgh, and he said, make sure you pay attention to the game. He said how his broadcasting partner told him to knock, to pay attention to the game and not get stuck looking at that beautiful uh, city landscape behind when you're up in the broadcast booth. Exactly. It's <laughs> gorgeous. Like you know, it's funny you say that. It, right? Exactly. And, it, you know, like, and I have to do concentrate on that, too, because when I'm working with uh, – I was working with Korak last year and I, I love listening to the guy. And I, there are times where I was listening to him getting caught up and what do you, you know, and I'm like, Oh, that's right. I'm calling a game with him too. That's right. I gotta remember that. He's so, it's so descriptive. And it's like, he's got, he's got that kind of mesmerizing voice. And it's like, that's right. I'm, I gotta remember I'm calling a game here too. So uh, don't get, don't get so lost in it, but yeah, no, it's uh, it really is. I, I'm really enjoying, I think to make it the advantage to making it uh, to the big leagues when you're older, is you do, have a tendency to appreciate it more and take your time, be slow with it and just enjoy your present moment happiness with where you are, you know, enjoy, enjoy the stadiums. And, and so that's one advantage I think of making it uh, when you're a little older. Well, you kind of talk about keeping that perspective and I feel like I do that a lot. Like I'll think about some of the, even the freedoms I have now, like on my off days, things I can do, being able to have a podcast, you know, having time for that. Um, do you feel like you'll always have that perspective or maybe catch yourself like trying to remind yourself, don't forget what maybe it was like before you got here. Yeah, I experienced that. I, I I do like these, the hotels we stay in and the flights. Like I, I was on so many Southwest flights, with all due respect to Southwest, not Chapman Southwest, <laughs> love Southwest, but being on those charter flights now. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's funny, this off season, I went to a beach volleyball tournament with my daughter and, uh, and, we stayed in like a, you know, it was a comfort inn or something. And I'm just like, I was kind of complaining about the place. She's like, <laughs> she's 18. She's like, check yourself a little bit. You stayed in these places for years before your big league thing. And she, she was right. Like, look, check yourself a little bit. Like, you know, <laughs> we're fortunate to stay in these places. So there are, I have those moments too, where I'm just like, oh my, don't be that guy. Don't be, don't be unappreciative. If you've been a comfort inn, enjoy that. Like, come on, like what's yeah. wrong with you? So I, I'm glad she helped me get in perspective when I was complaining a little bit, you know, just about the accommodations compared to what I had this year in the big league. So yeah, yeah. There are definitely times where you have to just appreciate, appreciate where you've come from and where, where you, you know, where you were these, I remember even 2012 when I, when I, when I uh, broadcast, we had a game in Seattle and we were at the Fairmont and I went up to the Fairmont. I, that's one moment where I did, it was my first really, really really nice hotel and I, I was like i got upstairs i'm like oh my goodness this is not you know <laughs> the triple a hotels this is not this is un unbelievable so yeah I, I i need to remember that and uh uh for someone that really didn't i think appreciate it that much the first time around in 2012 that was one thing the hotels that i did i did appreciate for nice. sure well, we have a really uh, special haiku that I thought it was great. It, walking from hotel, knew it was temporary, savored every game. And you wrote that during your first call up you just mentioned. So uh, do you still walk to, to the ballparks when you can? And it sounds like obviously you're, you're savoring every game. Like do you still, it sounds like you keep that with you. I do. I try to, I try to walk to and, and ballparks that are walkable. I mean, I know that when in 2012, Mickey Morabito, Mickey thought I was crazy because I walked from the hotel to uh, Fenway. It was like a 35, 40 minute walk. He's like, you're crazy. What are you doing? What, what really? Why wouldn't you take the bus? Because like, Mickey, I want to savor it. Like you said, I, by the way, how do you, how you have that on your mind, that, how you had that haiku uh, in your head is incredible. Someone asked me on an interview the other day to what's your favorite haiku? And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, I was like, trying to remember my haiku. I kind of yeah. <laughs> drew a blank. So thank you for remembering that haiku. I, 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 that, that's, that was, I remember that writing that haiku because that's exactly how I felt. Mm. It was, uh, yeah, I do. I do. I like, I like walking uh, around the ballpark too and experiencing that. We walked home this last year, Dallas and, uh, and Birdie and I, uh, Mike Bird, we walked back from the hotel to um, from the stadium to the hotel. It was like a forty-five uh, minute walk, an hour walk back, and it was awesome, wow. awesome walk. So, so I, I I do enjoy those long walks um, around the stadium or to the stadium and and all that. So, yeah, some some places you can't; it's just too far mm -hmm. from the hotel. But 
yeah, I, I, I definitely like like my uh, like to get a get a gauge of the surrounding area. I love it. That's great, and it's interesting. I was thinking most people, whether you're you know playing music or sports or you're in a play, you want your parents like in the audience to see you. But I guess for you, you probably want your parents at home watching the game or listening so they can hear you call it, which is kind of an interesting dynamic. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, it's funny. Uh, um, <clears throat> my wife will watch or watch or listen uh, to the games, and and uh, and but it was the really cool cool moment for me, man, was um, this last year uh, growing up going to Dodger Stadium, and my I got my dad to the stadium. So, you know, I grew up, you know, looking up in the, to that booth that Vince Scully and Ross Porter were calling the games. And, and I'd be like, man, someday I want to, I want to broadcast at this stadium someday, you know, and I didn't, and it finally happened last year. It came to fruition. So my dad was there and that was really a cool, cool moment, cool time to, to have him up there in, in, you know, in that whole, in that Vince Scully press box. Wow, yeah. And, uh, being a part of that was really, really cool. That was one of the best moments from last year that, I, that I'll never forget. Well, speaking of someone like Vince Scully too, uh, did you have any uh, broadcasters that helped keep you motivated or mentors? Because I've heard John Miller say a lot of positive things about you. So I was just curious what your relationship's like with him or maybe other guys that... That's so nice. Uh, yeah, Miller, John's great. And I, I listened to him and, uh, you know, Kruten Kuiper great and... and uh, Dave Fleming, obviously, and Vince and Ken, Dallas, the, the, the opportunity to just these Bay Area broadcasters, pretty, pretty good group, yeah. pretty good group, right? Like it's <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty solid. So, you know, just hearing those guys when I was in Fresno and getting to hear the Giants guys, hear the Ace guys, um, that was was it was in, a little intimidating, but also uh, motivating. Because uh, they 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 had a job that I, I would like to do that someday be be in the Bay Area broadcast but those guys you know listen to Herb Carneal the late Herb Carneal um, do Minnesota Twins games when I was in Iowa when I started off in Iowa and I was listening to the Twins I always enjoyed his style yeah uh, so he he was motivating for me uh, but you know getting satellite radio and getting to hear all these broadcasters though the satellite radio for the last five six years has been really cool right so you got to I got to hear all the announcers from from all over the country. And that was really, really cool to, to get the chance to hear those hometown broadcasters and uh, all, all the talent in this, in this, uh, in this great game in MLB. So yeah, it's a good question. I think a lot of people motivated me from listening to them and John Miller. I mean, he's the standard and Miller's one of the best <laughs> to ever do it. You know, so yeah. just he's um, he's got, and, and one thing John does so well is his pacing and the way he uses the crowd and the way, I mean, his vocabulary is off the charts and just the way he paints a picture. It's just, uh, that was pretty cool getting to work with him and watching him do what he does. Uh, it's, uh, that voice is just, <laughs> ridiculous, you know, how good, how good his voice is. So yeah, it, it's, it's been, it's been really fun. And I think, uh, you know, you, you read articles on the Bay area broadcasters and the tradition of all the great broadcasters in the, in the Bay area. Uh, uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable. I had the chance to have Monty Moore on the air when I was in, uh, mm -hmm. Fresno and he was, he was, living just outside of Fresno. I had a chance to get him on a bunch of times when I did, uh, when I did the Sacramento games, when we were in Fresno and he, he, he is, he is such a great guy. So that, there, there are a lot of great broadcasters and what a tradition, right? Tradition, yeah. pretty rich in tradition for all the broadcasters in this, uh, this region. Yeah, true. And, you know, speaking about all the great broadcasters, the history uh, you're in that group and, who was more emotional when I know you kind of knew that the call was coming, like it wasn't a total surprise, right? Uh, when the A's came around. So wh who was more emotional? Was it you or your wife? Uh, I think, I, I think I'm tend to be more emotional than my wife anyway. Okay. So I think I, was, but when the call, when the call came, uh, my wife was, she was emotional. There's no question. But when the call came, the actual official call came, I was out to lunch with a bunch of people. So I had to play it off. So I was at lunch with people with the river cats and I came out and, and, uh, Math Palak was at lunch and he kind of knew what was going on. So he's like, what's going on? I said, nothing. I'm good. And the, the tears were, you know, you're pushing it down. The like, bird talks about push that down, push it down, push down, <laughs> push down your feelings, push down your feelings. So, but I, it was just like, it was right here, and I, I just I started crying. I was walking way ahead of people. I started crying, and just to, to, but I I got it done, and I after I cried, I pushed it down, and played it off, and then I got to 
thing. And I told Mav, Mav knew it. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't say anything to anybody, but Mav knew, he already knew because he, he knew I was going for the job. So he knew what was going on. So that was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, cool time to get the official call that I was, I was going. It was pretty neat. After all those years, I just thought about everything and it just, it was uh, a wild experience to know that, wow, it's, it's actually official. It's going, it's going to happen. And I still had to keep it on the low for a while until they announced it. So I had to keep uh, that up that for so long, which was fine. It was fine. But it was like, I couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't tell my boss with the, I couldn't really tell it, my boss at the time with the river cats. I, 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 I had to tell I did tell him eventually, but it was like for a while there I had to keep it on the low. So it was really wild. How long yeah, it was, was it? How, how long did you have to keep it hush? I think about two or three weeks. Oh yeah. That'd be an eternity when you've been waiting so long. <laughs> right? So yeah. It's like so yeah. So uh nothing to see here. I was like, nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny, it's been a lot of fun to have you on. I really admire your story and feel like I related to it a lot too. So um it's great to have you on the show and I can't wait to see you around the ballpark. Me too, Ryan. A pleasure to be with you, and I love your story uh, as well. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it.